In another preliminary, he's been mentioned as a possible opponent. I take all comers. I don't duck any man. Uh, can we assume that Michael Dokes is one of the prospects? All comers. Come one, come all, because nobody can get close to me. They're not even close. I'm the best fighter in the world. In the spring of 1985, one special young man had his debut fight. Back then, no one knew he was destined to become one of the most recognizable boxers in history, Mike Tyson. He broke into the ring, demolishing one opponent after another on his path. His youth, speed, and powerful onslaught made his fight spectacular. In this episode, the lightning speed and the malicious aggression of the legendary Mike Tyson. There's never any doubts in my mind because I'm the best in the world, even though a lot of you don't like to hear it. I just, it's facts, I'm the best, you know what I mean? I sometimes, I don't want to believe in myself, but it's the truth, I'm the best. <laughs> Mike Tyson versus Ricardo Spain. The fourth fight in Mike Tyson's career took place on June 20th, 1985 at Resorts International, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Mike Tyson's fourth fight. First fight in front of a big time audience though. This time not in Mike Tyson. After a series of 12 unanswered strikes by Tyson, Spain tried to mount a comeback with a clinch. In an instant, Mike hits with a left hook sending Spain to the deck. It's like a steam hammer. And Ricardo Spain has already found out. Boy, that was quick. Boy, that was fast. Boy, that was found out. Leaning on the ropes, Ricardo rose at the count of eight. As soon as the referee gave the command to continue the fight, both boxers went on the attack. Both missed their targets, but Mike Tyson was faster and immediately landed a left hook to Spain's jaw. Ricardo's knees bent, which saved him from two more blows, but the referee stopped the bout. Absolutely destroyed him there. Well, we wondered, didn't we, when we saw the Halvin fight? Mike Tyson versus Michael Johnson. Mike's eighth fight, which took place on September 5th, 1985. The fight, like most of young Tyson's bouts, did not last long. Only 39 seconds. After the first exchange of blows and a powerful left hook to the liver, Johnson was knocked down to the floor of the ring. The referee counted and gave the command to continue. The fight quickly began again and Tyson hit Johnson with a powerful right cross, knocking him out. Mike Tyson versus Robert Coley. The 10th fight in Mike Tyson's career took place on October 25th, 1985 at the Atlantis Hotel, Atlantic City, New Jersey. The scheduled eight round match began quickly and ended just as quickly, all in the style of the young Mike Tyson. In the first round, Tyson crushed this taller opponent at just 37 seconds, taking him down with a powerful left hook. Mike Tyson versus Eddie Richardson. The 12th fight in the career of Mike Tyson took place on November 13, 1985 in Houston, Texas. There were a lot of spectators in the hall. Everyone got comfortable in anticipation of the next knockout. And the knockout came, 1 minute 17 seconds into the first round, when Mike delivered a left hook to Eddie's head.
it's over. I see right now a major flaw and problem in, in Mike Tyson's career, and that's going to be to have a fight that lasts long enough. Mike Tyson versus David Jaco. The 16th fight in Mike Tyson's career took place on January 11, 1986, at the Plaza Convention Center, Albany, New York. Each time Tyson tried to develop a new attack, Jaco would resort to a clinch, apparently hoping to tire him. After one of these combinations, a strike landed on David's head, and he found himself knocked down into the corner of the ring. The blow was not too strong, and David found the strength to rise. Tyson, as in previous battles, immediately rushed to finish off his opponent. Moving like a pendulum in front of his discouraged rival, he throws out another left side strike and again puts David on the floor of the ring. Tyson himself, probably tired of hitting so much, seemed to slow down the fight, now aiming for a single hit to end the match. Having missed a monstrous left hook, he immediately strikes with a right cross to Jaco's head. David is back on the floor. The referee had no choice but to stop the fight due to the three knockdown rule. Mike Tyson versus William Hosea. After two 10 round battles against James Tillis and Mitch Green, Tyson denied any skepticism that he lacked stamina. True, it's worth noting that Hosea was just scared and quickly got knocked out. But this does not detract from the effectiveness of Tyson's punches. After a clinch, Mike catches William on an oncoming right cross and tries to develop an attack by embarking on a powerful series. Most of the blows glanced, but from the sheer number and the heavy pace, Hosea falls to the floor of the ring. He clearly was not eager to continue the fight and deliberately did not rise before the count of 10. The referee stopped the fight. Mike Tyson versus Lorenzo Boyd. The fight took place on July 11, 1986 in Swan Lake, New York. This fight was one of a series of fights that Tyson held in the summer of 1986, already on the outskirts of a battle for the championship title. Boyd, a normal, average boxer, could not mount a serious resistance and as a result was knocked out in the second round. Entering close range, Boyd tries to break through Tyson's defense, but to no avail. Mike himself, having waited a moment, inflicted a powerful right uppercut, but the overshot missed. Tyson calmly walks up to him again and hits him with his crown right hook into Boyd's core, and then followed with a right uppercut. Lorenzo falls to the ring floor. The count is five. The count is six. The count is eight. He will not get up. It's over. Sam, show me what heavyweight throws punches that quick. Those were two right hands, one to the body, and you snap your fingers. It, it was turned into, I believe, it was a right. Mike Tyson versus Marvis Frazier. In July 1986, Mike met with Marvis Frazier, the son of the famous heavyweight champion Joe Frazier. The son of the great Joe was far from being as strong as his father, who was his coach and manager. What Joe was counting on by matching Marvis against Tyson is not entirely clear. But when watching the battle, it seems that the young Frazier was hit by a truck. At the beginning of the first round, Mike cornered the opponent and hit him with a right uppercut. Frazier was shocked. Tyson immediately carried out a series of strong blows. His enemy fell. The referee started the countdown, but seeing that Frazier was lying insensibly, he stopped counting. It was a hard knockout. Frazier came to his senses in a few minutes. Tyson took only 30 seconds to knock out Frazier. This fight was the shortest in the professional career of Iron Mike. Mike 
Mike Tyson vs. Alfonso Ratliff The fight against Alfonso was the last for Mike before the fight for the champion title with Trevor Burbick. Tyson quickly figured out his rival, demonstrating the brilliant technique that distinguished him in his early years in the professional ring. After waiting a moment, Mike dodges to the left and throws a powerful left hook into Ratliff's jaw. Alfonso falls onto the ring floor. Climbing to his knee, he waits until the referee counts to nine and gets up. Mike Tyson rushes to finish and shoots a series of eight hits. Ratliff finds some relief in a clinch. After the referee breaks the clinch, Tyson begins beating Ratliff near the ropes. Mike Tyson versus Pinklin Thomas. The battle took place on May 31, 1987. At this point, Mike was the owner of the WBA and WBC belts. Thomas approached this match with a good track record of a series of three victories in a row and was considered a serious test for the 20-year-old Tyson. And at the beginning of the match, it seemed so. Thomas managed to cope with the pressure of Iron Mike for five rounds. However, in the sixth, three-minute period, Tyson carried out a series of powerful uppercuts and hooks from both hands, some of which landed right on his opponent's jaw. Thomas stumbled, and then after another left hook, crumpled him to the canvas. He did not have time to get up before the end of the count, and the referee stopped the match. It's worth saying that before this fight with Mike Tyson, Thomas had never been knocked down. Stop a championship fight. I think he counted him out. I'm not sure if that's going to be scored as a TKO or a knockout. I think he may have counted him out. We'll have to wait and get him. Mike Tyson versus Tony Tubbs. The battle took place in the spring of March 1988. In this fight, Mike defended his title of absolute world champion in the heavyweight category. The fight did not last long, ending in the second round with just one but very powerful left hook. After such a devastating blow, Tubbs could not even rise when the judge counted to ten. Mike Tyson versus Frank Bruno. The time of this fight just coincided with a difficult period in the personal life and career of Iron Mike. As for personal difficulties, he was in the process of divorcing his wife, and in his career, litigation with promoters. Tyson had very little time to prepare for the upcoming battle, only a couple weeks of full training. From the very first seconds of the battle, Mike carried out an effective attack, after which Bruno was on the canvas. It was a knockdown. Bruno's already tagged with a right hand. And there goes Bruno for the first time to fight. The first right hand that got him, he was down. Bruno managed to recover and continue the fight, sometimes showing good boxing. It all ended in the fifth round when Tyson struck a series of punches, from which Bruno was thrown to the ropes. It was there that Mike began to continuously beat him and it stopped only when Bruno's team threw in the towel. Richard Steele has moved in and has stopped the fight. It's all over. Michael Tyson wins on a fifth round TKO. Mike Tyson versus Donovan Ruddock. This was a very interesting and revealing battle. Ruddock was a hefty Canadian who, of course, was afraid of Tyson. 
but not to the point that he would immediately fall, like Henry Tillman or Alex Stewart. Most likely, Ruddock was a hidden left-handed person, that is a left-handed person standing in an ordinary left-handed stance. In general, a good but very limited boxer. All his technique came down to getting to his signature hit with the left, something between a hook and an uppercut. But he certainly had a powerful blow. The fight proceeded in a bitter struggle, with some advantage on Tyson's side. In the seventh round, he hit Ruddock's jaw with a left hook. Ruddock staggered and leaned on the ropes. Mike Tyson rushed in to finish off the opponent, but the referee, Richard Steele, suddenly stopped the bout, calling a TKO. The decision was very controversial. After the battle stopped in the ring, a brawl began. After the intervention of the security guard, the fight was stopped. Mike Tyson versus Buster Mathis Jr. The battle took place in December of 1995. Mathis held his defense and avoided Mike's punch as well, but this did not last long. In the third round, Tyson sent Buster Mathis to the floor with a right uppercut. Mathis did not have time to rise before the count of 10, and the referee called a knockout. This is the world of boxing. Thank you for watching. Please press the like button and comment below, as well as subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new episodes about legends of the past.